Hello guys, namaste. So I welcome you all to this Sunday webinar series. So glad all of you are here. And uh, today we have with us uh, Dr. Naraini. She is an Ayurveda doctor with the name of spreading Ayurveda to each and every person. And uh, she is an amazing singer. Like she sings so well, she's multi-talented. And so let's hear from her about uh, the daily tips, the daily rituals that you can do from the Ayurveda perspective. Over to you, Narani. Hello, everyone. I hope everyone's doing good in spite of COVID. So yeah, Dinacharya, you know, I hope everybody's aware about uh, the topic we're going to discuss. I would just share a few things uh, from Ayurveda, what was said thousands of years back about uh, how we should uh, go about our day. Yeah. So uh, according to you all, you can maybe just put it in the chat because I cannot, uh, I don't want it to be just one sided. So maybe put it in the chat. What do you think? Uh, is the best time to wake up and uh, everybody is aware about this these days, right? Bachpan se sunte aare hai ki jaldi uthna chahiye, jaldi uthna chahiye. Grandparents bolte the ki aare ek baar jaldi uthke to dekho, sab badal jayega, right? So we've been hearing all these things. So same ways Ayurveda also says that uh, we should wake up early in the morning. What is, how early is this early morning? It's around 48 minutes before the sun rises. So, you know, today uh, waking up early is not the real issue. None of us, uh, everybody wants to wake up early. But uh, the issue really is we are not able to sleep on time, which is why we are not able to wake up on time, right? So, why is uh, this thing happening these days? One of the things is obviously our uh, gadgets and uh, the technology which is in everybody's rooms and we are on that going to bed means this is our phone time. So that is one reason. So we'll see first why sleep and uh, how sleep is important. Yeah. So we know, a lot of us might know that uh, there are four sources of energy. What are these four sources of energy? Food, sleep breath and a calm mind yeah so sleep therefore is a very important if we have not had a proper sleep then definitely the next day is going to be lethargic and we are going to feel tired and not as enthusiastic about our work so that's how important sleep is now a lot of us feel six to eight hours of sleep is enough but it is very very essential when are those six to eight hours we are taking you know it, it's not like if we sleep at, uh, you know, very late at night and wake up at very, uh, in almost mid noon. It's not like we're going to feel the same enthusiasm and energy. It's not like that. So in Ayurveda, we see that uh, very specifically, it has been told uh, that uh, right around, say, 8.39 to morning 4.30, 5 o'clock is the good time when we should take our sleep. Now, even in the, a lot of researchers have also proved this, that uh, night is the time when our body repairs and it heals itself. A lot of problems are anyway solved if we take proper sleep in the night, right? So, uh, that's how important our sleep is. Now, a lot of uh, our bodily chemicals, if they are not uh, secreted properly, we can have issues. Now, we... We are up on time. Now, what do we do waking up so early? You know, 5 o'clock in the morning, what do we do getting up so early? So, there are so many things which are mentioned by our saints uh, that we, if we start practicing, it is almost going to prevent all the diseases, you know. There will be very feeble chance of us getting sick, in fact. So, as soon as we get up early, the first thing which our Acharyas have mentioned is Sharir Chintana. That is seeing, observing our own body, how important, you know, how important that is 
if we have to go somewhere at 9 o'clock if we wake up at 8 o'clock we rush into our activities immediately we don't even get to observe was are we feeling relaxed are we feeling calm enough are we properly rested we don't even observe all that and we rush into our activities so first thing which acharyas have mentioned is sharir chintan it is so important to observe our own body and mind how are we feeling when we wake up in the morning yeah and then after that we go on to brushing our teeth and all of those activities so now very detailedly brushing also has been mentioned and now we all do that so that is not something i want to mention here so after we have done all the brushing and everything we go for all the uh, excretory activity and this is a very important aspect in ex- our if our bowel movements are proper if first of all if our food which we take uh, we took uh, the last night is digested properly automatically our bowel movements will be fine so for that in the morning a lot of us take tea and uh, coffee so that is something which is not very healthy it is not a very healthy habit we should try and avoid taking those things if we want to take something we can take warm water or hot water so that can be taken and uh, in ayurveda we call it usha pana so that can be taken and then after the excretory act in excretory activity i would mention these days this is kind of a habit uh, which i have uh, observed and seen in a lot of people that they sit for very long uh, durations in the washroom they maybe take newspapers or phones or you know and then they spend like 15 20 30 minutes in the washroom so that is one thing which can cause a lot of problem in our body uh, a lot of uh, anal related problems can uh, actually happen if we sit for longer durations and uh, uh, you know applying uh, uh, putting lot of strain uh, if some people who if they are constipated they put a lot of pressure nahi aaj to aaj to hona hi hai so that, that is not something you should do it is a natural urge we call na nature's call so it it should come naturally to you it it ha- you should not uh, put in effort you should not forcefully stimulate uh, these urges it can cause a lot of uh, trouble in the body if we do it in an unnatural way so uh, okay now excretion everything is done and now now are the specific things which ayurveda has beautifully uh, mentioned we should practice every day the first thing there is nasya karma now this nasya karma is nothing but a uh, nasal drop application like putting drops in your uh, some medicine or some oil in your uh, uh, nostrils so it was told as a regular activity which can be practiced every day now there are uh, a proper therapeutic nasya karma and then there is nitya nasya karma which we do every day so here we are talking about the regular activity uh, application of nasal drops on regular basis so two drops each nostril and we are good to go what does this actually help in this improves our whole above the neck region strength it improves our uh, uh, sensory perception it prevents an, any kind of uh, issues in our sense organs definitely and then in ayurveda there is a, a saying that nasa hi shiraso dwaram you know that the nose is the only opening for the brain so any kind of uh, stress or uh, you know a lot of uh, people feel uh, tightness and headaches and uh, all those strenuous things if they do they feel very heavy head they feel like a heavy head so all those things can be prevented if we uh, do this nasya karma on daily basis and otherwise also it helps to reduce all the accumulations in the upper upper part of the body but now wherever there is some indication of some procedure there's also an contra there's also a contra indication for that so people who have uh, undigested food people who have uh, sinusitis people who have running nose or frequent sneezing and all those uh, symptom they should not do nasya karma they are uh, contra indicated to nasya yeah so uh, when usually if uh, some of you plan to start doing it if they uh, you know want to consult somebody and then start taking uh, nasal drops then the procedure has been told so please uh, make sure that you learn the procedure and then follow uh, the procedure 
so after nasya karma there has been uh, mention of uh, kavala and gandusha now this sounds like a very fancy word and uh, you know sanskrit heavy word but uh, this kavala and gandusha is nothing but our oil pulling and thanks to anushka sharma uh, on instagram she posted a picture saying uh, mentioning about oil pulling and how it is very beneficial about uh, in the for the upper body uh, this thing uh, benefits are uh, sense organs and the cleans our oral cavity and all those things so uh, oil pulling is nothing but taking around 2 to 3 1 and 1/2 to Uh, teaspoons of uh, oil it can be any oil coconut oil cinnamon oil or uh, a simple sesame oil we can take any oil keep it keeping it in mouth for like a minute or two so a feature which we need to observe if we are keeping oil in our mouth is that our uh, eyes start to water a little so keeping in your uh, mouth till then and then spitting it out that is what is uh, gandusha karma that is oil pulling and if uh, people who have a uh, lot of coating in their mouth they should not be uh, doing oil pulling they can instead use uh, a simpler decoction like trifla uh, everybody is aware about trifla these days so trifla kashaya can be used like a detox a decoction uh, uh, made from a trifla and uh, that can be uh, kept in mouth and uh, they can use it for gargling also and uh, squishing all around and all that so that is one thing which is very beautiful and uh, i feel it's very helpful if we do on day, day to day uh, practice uh, after oil pulling naturally if we are putting something in our mouth we are going to feel a little coated and uh, not so clean in our mouth so for that they have mentioned uh, surprisingly betel leaf chewing so betel leaf is also uh, told to be very beneficial for your uh, digestion also and uh, your oral cavity because the rasas the tastes which are uh, present in the betel leaf they are very beneficial for our oral cavity hygiene so that is one thing we can uh, do if we wake up so early and uh, so uh, after all this our oral cavity is fine we have done all our excretory activities next procedure which is one of my favorite is abhyanga procedure it is uh, nothing but full body massage Now, abhyanga is a topic i can actually talk for i think the whole session but i would just cut it short a little uh, abhyanga you know it's not just uh, massaging your skin so we are providing benefits to our skin no abhyanga works on all levels right from our body to our mind it improves our immunity it improves our uh, uh, central nervous system it improves our cardiovascular system uh, improves our circulation i mean it is uh, beneficial for our lymphatic drainage so it helps in all of those overall nourishment of the body even for people who are very emaciated and are having problems in gaining weight even for them it's a very uh, beneficial procedure they can do every day and it's a 15 minutes if we uh, 15 minutes if we take out and do a full body massage it's going to give so many benefits yeah so how do we do this it's not like we normally just apply all uh, oil all over the body so right from how to heat the oil to how to apply the oil it has been mentioned very beautifully so heating the oil has to be indirect heating we should not uh, directly heat the oil on the stove or in in a vessel we should not heat it directly so maybe in a hot water bath or uh, something like that we can uh, use indirect heating microwaves are not to be used for oil heating because uh, they completely <laughs> destroy the actual uh, composition of the uh, oil and uh, for after we are heating the oil uh, they should not be very hot it should be warm like a little warmer than you can uh, take from your body temperature it will be warmer than your body temperature so now application of oil has to be from the head to your lower parts so first application of oil has to be on the head now in ayurveda there is specific mention to shiro abhyanga and pada abhyanga we'll talk about it uh, after we are done with the whole application procedure so on the head and after head we are applying it on the face the ears the neck and then so on now ear 
on ear why is it so important to apply oil on the ear and massage on the ear because you know there is a one vagus nerve which is the longest nerve in our body uh, and it it's so widespread its functions are so widespread so a branch of vag vagus nerve actually is a very subcutaneous which means like it's on almost just under the skin so it is subcutaneous on our ears so if we are uh, massaging our ears it's stimulating the vagus nerve indirectly and it helps to regulate the functions of the vagus nerve also so that's how important uh, ear you remember in uh, school or when we were kids our teachers used to pull ear every time we used to make a mistake or something so that's how important uh, ear massages so after we do the uh, full body uh, massage specific mention like i said was given about uh, shiro abhyanga and pada abhyanga now shiro abhyanga after a tiring day somebody comes and gives a oil massage on, or maybe just a simple dry massage also on our head we feel so relaxed right so shiro abhyanga is just that it it not only reduces stress but it also improves our uh, sensory function sensory function why i keep stressing on sensory function is because they, these are the five panchagnana indriyas we are perceiving everything from the world through these five senses and these five senses are constantly occupied in uh, action they are constantly working in whatever work we do right so that's how important uh, the function of and honestly all the stress we accumulate is from our senses it's nowhere no other uh, digestive system and all those things they give little stress when they are not working properly but most of the day to day stress we are accumulating from our senses right so that's how important our uh, sensor sense organs are so uh, shiro abhyanga helps to improve our uh, strength in the senses uh, sense organs then it definitely improves the uh, hair quality and hair texture and all that and definitely abhyanga also has a cosmetic a lot of cosmetic value because everybody wants a lustrous glowing shiny skin and wants to look young so abhyanga has that aspect also then uh, talking about pada abhyanga pada abhyanga helps a lot in improving the sleep this is from personal experience absolutely it improves our sleep and it improves our uh, quality of sleep i would say and like i was mentioning in the uh, initial uh, i mean in the starting uh, how important it is to get good sleep so pada abhyanga is one thing which we can all uh, start doing and uh, it it will really help you all yeah so abhyanga is uh, and we can use any oil for uh, abhyanga if uh, if you have very sensitive skin then you can just go for simple uh, tila taila or coconut oil and if people uh, like who have a lot of rash like redness and rashes on the skin they can use ghee also for abhyanga ghee is very uh, beneficial for uh, people who have a little over sensitive skin i would say and uh, otherwise people who if they have a lot of pains in the body then there are a lot of uh, oils available in the market uh, for specific uh, problems also if somebody is having a lot of body pains then they can use like maha narayana taila or narayana taila if they have uh, you know some skin disorders then uh, according to that they can choose uh, their oils otherwise simple almond oil coconut oil sesame oil they can use for daily uh, abhyanga yeah now abhyanga is uh, done next is after abhyanga we don't rush to take a shower instantly we first now is the time uh, we do the exercises vyayama now vyayama is one thing which is literally over talked uh, concept these days everybody is uh, researching about it and talking about it and you know i i have to work out and i have to go to the gym and all of those things gyms are obviously closed right now because of covid but yeah so how did our acharyas mentioned about uh, vyayama exercises vyayama is nothing but sharira ayas jaram that is when we take a little effort extra effort to make our body little tired now a person who is a dancer or you know who is uh, having a little more strenuous physical activity in daily routine for that person the amount of vyayama might not be same as the person who has a desk job 
yeah so it differs for person to person now it's not like somebody who has a very strenuous uh, job throughout the day for him if he you know if he does 5 10 minutes of exercise that's enough no because exercise is something which improves your karma samarthyam that is improves your efficiency or improves your capacity to work better so for a dancer 5 minutes extra if uh, he or she is exercising it's not going to make much difference right so for that person it's going to be different and for a person who is sitting and doing uh, work on the laptop the whole day the amount of exercise needed is different so so that's how we differentiate about uh, amount of exercise specifically it has been told as ardha shaktya that is half to your capacity if you can if your body says that you have the capacity to say work out for around 1 hour then you should be doing it only for half an hour or 30 minutes uh, 35 40 minutes if because if you over exert yourself then more than providing it providing karma samarthya that is increasing your capacity or strength it will cause deterioration in the body which is not what we are looking for after exercising so ardha shaktya that is half to your capacity how do we understand this capacity it is very simple uh, you start observing little sweat on your forehead if you start panting a little bit i won't say little bit some people uh, have a tendency to start panting too soon but you know you need to observe your body that is very important here sharir chintan is very important so sweat on your forehead and uh, panting and you feel that tiredness when you start feeling the tiredness then we should stop the exercise and now this is something which increases with every day today i am very enthusiastic i want to work out a lot and i go straight do one hour of uh, workout no that is going to cause harm to your body so we need to start step by step if i decide that oh, okay from today onwards i am going to work out then maybe we should start with like 15 minutes of workout for today then increase it step by step you know padam shakrama in ayurveda we call it like little bit little by little we increase the quantity now who are the people who should not do exercise or do abhyanga this is very very important we need to understand people who have ajirna that is the the, the food they took the previous day or maybe the day before that has not been digested they don't feel that lightness and their food is not properly digested if they feel uh, that you know their stomach is heavy or their bowel movements are not proper or uh, they feel a little feverish or they have symptoms like cold or you know some other uh, acute disorders then for those people vyayama and abhyanga is contraindicated we should not uh, suggest them to go for either of these two things this is uh, because if they do that then it's uh, their body is already occupied in uh, working on their digestion and you know curing from the problem if we make them do workouts or uh to the abhyanga abhyanga is what improves the circulation peripherally also so the blood circulation is needed in some other area so the body is focusing on that particular area if you divert the focus then that procedure will take even longer to uh, cure uh, itself so for these people uh, these things are contraindicated right so then uh, there's uh, one more thing mentioned that if we are doing vyayama then these days specifically a lot not these days actually because of covid everybody is home but vyayama improves the heat activity in the body so if we are doing vyayama and all these things in acs then that is something which is not going to give us so much benefit right so for uh, vyayama we need a room which is almost similar to our body temperature or maybe like around 29 24 to 29 degrees celsius should be fine and without ac so in that atmosphere we should do our practices now vyayama is done now we can relax ourselves and after vyayama there's mention spe- specific mention about mardana karma that is rubbing our body all over so we have done uh, full exercise and then we just have to just uh, gently rub our body and after that when we are relaxed and our body temperature is normal and our 
panting has reduced and we are normal now now we can go for a nice warm water shower yeah so uh, after uh, this thing um, abhyanga and uh, vyayama if we go for a cold water shower then it's going to cause a little bit of trouble in our body because uh, these two things kind of help in vasodilation and then suddenly if we take a cold water uh, shower then it's going to cause sudden uh, vasoconstriction so it's going to prob- uh, cause a little bit problem it's not a healthy act- uh, habit so we should always prefer taking a little not too warm too hot but like little warm water is fine uh, and uh, specifically uh, if we are uh, taking a head shower uh, the above above the neck part should be always and always taken with uh, almost like normal temperature not warm also because uh, our uh, definitely scalp and our sense organs it's going to get hampered if uh, it's too hot the water is too hot right so a warm water shower should be fine okay one more thing i forgot to mention in abhyanga when we are doing the massage uh, it has to be from upward to downward movement in the direction of your hair follicles right because if we take the opposite direction then it's going to cause more friction and that uh, that can cause a little uh, rash or uncomfortable feeling on your skin so it should always always be from upward to downward direction and uh, also on the joints it has to be circular movements uh, if uh, you're doing on the knee joints or elbow joints or any joints for that matter it should be circular movements yeah uh, and also one more thing there was a uh, these days a lot of us uh, buy very expensive uh, scrubbing gel and creams and soaps and all that right a lot of girls i i see in the group yeah <laughs> so uh, now thousands of years back also acharya has mentioned the procedure of scrubbing in the form of udvartana that is powder massage so for that they told they can we can use simple uh, gram flow that is besan or uh, trifla churna also can be used for uh, rubbing all over the body and if your skin is too dry then you can add a little oil in that with that powder and you can do it like once a week or something so scrubbing has also been told by our acharyas and especially for obese people uh, they they should be doing udvartana more than abhyanga so if they are doing uh, abhyanga on daily basis they can add a little powder to their oil also they can do that so uh, udvartana has been mentioned in such a way and it it gets a, it brings a lot of lightness in the body and improves the skin quality and skin texture also if uh, we practice it at least once a week yeah uh, so now we have taken a nice shower and we are ready to go to work before that we want to eat something right we want to have our breakfast now here uh, i would want to mention a little bit about how our eating habits should be in our day lot of us what we do is oh 10 baj gaya abhi tak breakfast nahi kiya chalo jaldi se khana kha lete hain so that is something we need to stop doing and we need to stop looking at the watch and eat because it's time to eat we need to observe that oh am i really hungry and honestly if we are practicing all the daily schedule properly then we will feel hungry on proper timing we will feel hungry at around 8 8:30 in the morning and we will feel hungry for lunch around 12:30 1 o'clock unless we eat a lot of parathas in the breakfast so if we practice all these things we will feel hungry at proper time but if we are not feeling hungry then we should not stuff ourselves just because it's time to eat yeah a lot of us have a uh, practice of uh, eating a lot of snacks or just you know eating something while working so that is something which is very i'm suggestive you know because it it it's not going to do any good to you it's not going to provide any nutrition to your body and your body doesn't need it your body can will tell you we need to start listening to our body that okay now i need food let me eat food now i need some water let me drink water so these are the things which we'll understand if we start listening to our body yeah so for breakfast 8:30 8 is the is normal to eat that time but it's just we should feel hungry and uh, about eating i would uh, just 
I would want you to all, I would want you all to observe that, you know, how is your hunger? How is your system? What is your system saying about your eating and hunger? Then you'll actually understand. In Ayurveda, we see, uh, we, we say that uh, hungry, actually hungry means if you keep oil on your navel, it should melt. Oil in the sense, uh, ghee. If we keep ghee on our navel, it should melt. So that is what we call Agni in uh, Ayurveda. That is when you should actually eat food. And we act, in ancient times, it was mentioned as Dvi Annakala. That is, we should eat twice in a day. Proper meal, which we call in today's time, obviously, because the lifestyle is very different, so it's okay to eat, however, and we all evolve. But it's just we need to listen to our uh, stomach and then eat. That is very, very essential. So, yeah, we are going forward. We are eating and then uh, we go for our work, whatever work we have, and then we are done with the work. In the work also, we should definitely take some time, like every one hour or one hour, 15 minutes or something, that we take a little five minutes, ten minutes break, stretch ourselves, and you know, change our posture. It's very essential. So after that, we can get back to our work. Especially pe for people who have a desk desk job, you know, because for them, it's uh, constant sitting in one po uh, posture. It's gonna cause a lot of uh, problem to their spines, and that's why most of us have this neck issue, lower back issue, and a lot of uh, spine related issues, right? So uh, yeah, that's about going to work and uh, everything. Now we are done with work, we come back home. We come back home, we feel tired, what do we do? Uh, this is the time, this is also evening time is uh, when we can actually do a lot of uh, practices like some meditation or sitting with ourselves again, chintan. That is the time we should get involved in all these things uh, because that is uh, Specifically, if I talk about in terms of doshas, that is the time when it's Vata Dosha Kala. And when with the sun set, there is always a tendency to feel a little low and dull. A lot of us feel a little dull and unproductive in that time if we are not in office or working. So that is the time when we should get involved in some manan, some chintan, and spend some time with ourselves, sitting with ourselves. Yeah. And and then if we if we actually start doing that, I think we are good to go. We won't really feel low or sad or all of that. Yeah. And after that, then again it's dinner time, and we can have dinner by seven thirty, eight maximum eight. Originally, according to the classics, the dinner should be done before sunset. Yeah. So because. So our body is like same replica of the nature. Sun comes up, our Agni is up. Sun goes down, our Agni is down. So our Agni will go down and our body will not have the strength to digest enough after sunset. But again, we evolve with the time and today's lifestyle. So I think 7.38, at least, at least two to three hours before we go to bed. It, that is something we all can practice. That does not mean that we eat our dinner at 10 and then go to sleep at, say, you know, 1 o'clock or something. No, we should not do that. But uh, definitely by 7, 7.30 if we eat dinner, and by 10, 9.30, 10, we can go to bed. Before going to bed, if uh, a lot of us have uh, problems to our stomach and digestive tract, then uh, we can practice drinking hot water. Or if you are, uh, if you feel little hungry again, then you can take a little milk also. So, say if we give gap between uh, dinner and milk for like around one and a half hours, we take milk and then from milk to sleep around forty minutes or forty-five minutes at least. So, if we practice that, then in the morning we will not have trouble in uh, bowel movements. And uh, yeah, so that is our dinacharya. Uh, so I think we can take some questions if if we have. Yes, we do have questions. Uh, so first, can you just do a recap, Narayani, about just tell the steps about what are the things that uh, needs to be taken care. Yes. 
for the nacharya so we wake up brahma murta and then do sharira chintan very important then next is our oral hygiene we brush and everything after that is our excretory activities yeah after that is that uh, nasya karma nasal uh, drop installation which i mentioned after that is kavala kandusha or oil pulling yeah after that is abhyanga that is full body massage which includes shiro abhyanga that is head massage uh, feet massaging and all these uh, overall full body massage then after that is vyayama after vyayama is mardana that is just rubbing all over the body just like for 2 minutes and then is when we are calm and settled we go for shat that is snana after bath then we can have something eat something or whatever that normal walk main is the morning time so they have the acharyas have left the day to you you can walk and do everything main is the morning uh, procedure which we should follow then in the evening after we are back we can just sit and meditate for some time we sit with ourselves and then dinner dinner by around 7 or something then at the night uh, one sometime before you go to bed you can have milk or hot water and uh, then we can go to sleep that's all great okay and about, uh, about sleep i'd mention uh, if we are using a lot of devices at night uh, you know mobile phones or watching tv or something like that then our uh, body secretes a chemical called melatonin which is responsible for us to get sleep so if we are uh, not uh, giving our mind that dark environment and calm environment then the body confuses itself and it feels that maybe it's still day and the melatonin reduction is prevented so we don't get sleep at time uh, at night at the proper time yeah so that's how uh, the cycle goes wrong everything further next everything is off balance then so that is uh, one thing uh, which we need to take care of okay so uh next one is uh, you spoke about breakfast at 8:30 usually uh, you know we get hungry by 8:30 so uh, there is uh, there are these things about intermittent fasting these days so what about that and if intermittent fasting so what time they should have the breakfast or two meals a day is what you mentioned yeah. so when they can have those two meals yes, yes. so like i also mentioned in ayurveda we call it only dvi anna kala that is two anna kalas twice a day if we are eating so in that case there in the first meal and the second meal in a day there should be 8 hours of gap and then the second meal and the next meal which is on the next day has to be 16 hours of gap approximately so now that you can consider it as like if you are eating uh, one meal in the morning which is around 11 you can eat and then 7 o'clock you can have your next meal that's that will be two meals a day uh, and we actually uh, in ayurveda it says dvi anna kala so yeah intermittent fasting is actually is mentioned in ayurveda right okay uh, could you please tell about the skin care routine to be followed skin care routine i would say the least amount of products which you can use on your skin that's the like your skin needs to breathe so your skin will be automatically fine if you are healthy from inside and definitely abhyanga will help a lot and there's also mention of mukha abhyanga that is uh, there are a lot of serums and oils mentioned uh, i mean available in the market today right so these oils and all are nothing but but to use on the face as mukha abhyanga so you can use uh, whatever oil suits your face and your skin type and you can just do a gentle massage and warm water like infuse with warm water but after that i wouldn't suggest any extra products or anything on your skin because the more chemicals you use that's going to just uh, make everything unnatural and if you need to maintain your inner uh, system 
your digestive system has to be fine and you need to keep yourself well hydrated which is very essential and with and your hormones also if your uh, hormones are not properly balanced then that can have an impact on your skin so skin routine on it, it shouldn't be like a separate entity it has to be in your overall health so if you're healthy your skin should be fine and you mentioned about the exercise which should not be done in air conditioned room so can we keep if it is very hot outside can we keep the ac at 27 degrees and do the exercise uh, you can keep it like around 28 yeah 28 29 it should not be too cold for you if, if it's on if it's extremely hot outside then definitely if you switch off the ac and uh, uh, you'll just start sweating so in that is 27 28 is fine but it shouldn't be your body will tell you again if you you'll start feeling a little cold if uh, you're sweating and all that so but otherwise 28 is fine it shouldn't be a problem okay. so how to cope up with cold in this rainy season yeah so when there's seasonal change our body has a tendency to have symptoms like that and uh, see go for cold if we are taking too much of external uh, medication and uh, all that then it's going to cause uh, somebody is answering nasya no nasya is not suggested in cold if you are having cold during that process you are not supposed to take nasya nasya can help to prevent the cold i think if that if somebody meant to answer it for uh, the question so yeah nasya shouldn't be taken during the cold otherwise it can be taken otherwise uh, Uh, it prevents cold but it doesn't cure it uh, for curing there are special nasal drops they are not general oil which i mentioned to be taken on a uh, regular basis yeah uh, so for cold yeah if you are having too much of blockages in your nose then you can uh, maybe uh, you know use ajwain you all know what is ajwain it's in our kitchen you can just a little bit uh, fry it uh, on the pan make it a little hot and make a potpourri out of it and then heat this area so all your uh, blockages will drain out you can take steam and uh, you can keep taking hot water and kadha and all these homely remedies they should help enough in yashti madhu yashti madhu is one thing which is very helpful you can uh, maybe chew yashti madhu and it's available a lot of medicines are available common cold tablets is available in uh, this uh, shri shri tatva these are all herbs only made up of all the herbs only those things can be taken but cold should be left alone to heal itself if you take too many things from outside it will come back another 15 days back so you should give it give it its time to heal it will be it will be better if you do that okay uh, can you tell any ayurvedic medicine to lose weight if any ayurvedic medicine to lose weight uh oral medication to lose weight shouldn't be taken medicines to improve your metabolism can be taken and uh, intermittent fasting helps uh, very nicely to lose weight so you can practice that but definitely you need to uh, consult properly depending on your prakriti and what is your uh, kosha i mean what is your gut like uh depending on that they would suggest you what is best for you how you should uh, do intermittent fasting so yeah but for medicine medicine for losing weight is not the right choice medicine to improve your metabolism can be done yeah you can I use simple uh, shunthi powder uh, that is dry ginger powder and hot water to improve your metabolism and there are a lot of medicines like chitrakali vati is there you can use that to improve your metabolism. I suffer from hyperacidity and often have bloating or blanching. Can you advise? Now we have consultation started. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> okay. Hyperacidity. You can start alkaline water uh, every night. You can soak around like two slices of uh, cucumber with the uh, actually three to four slices of cucumber with one to two slices of lemon. Soak it in water overnight. drain i mean uh, restrain the water and then drink that water in the morning that should be helpful to prevent your uh, acidity otherwise if you have a lot of uh, acidic issues then you need to consult a doctor properly not on a zoom call okay i mean 
on a Zoom call, but if it's an online consultation going on and not in a session, maybe. Yeah, if, I mean, if you need a consultation from Dr. Narayani, you can just get back to us. We'll connect you with her. Yeah, see, uh, actually alkaline water, I would suggest for everybody to take because most of our food is acidic in nature. You know, so there is nothing to uh, neutralize that effect of uh, acidic food in our uh, regular diet. So alkaline water is one thing which we can, we all can start. And uh, could you tell how to get rid of pimples? This is again part of consultation. <laughs> pimples depends why you're having the pimples. Go to the cause of pimples. If it's because of digestive issues or if, if it's because of your hormonal problems or if it's just because you're not keeping your uh, skin well cleaned and you're not maintaining hygiene. Depending on the cause, then we can look into what can be done. And if you're having uh, oily skin and all that, then Depending on that, we need to see what is best for you. But uh, one, kumkumadi uh, taila, there's one oil which is available and that is found to be quite helpful in that uh, pimple condition. Otherwise, simple uh, ghee application. But this is not in the acute phase. I mean, not when the pimples are very red and painful. After uh, they are settled and uh, there's no, I mean, you want me to consult on this? If there's no pus in it and they're not painful and they've uh, settled a little, then to prevent the marks, you can apply kumkumadi taila or normal ghee, in fact, also helps. It, it prevents uh, further growth of pimples. And keep yourself hydrated, that's very important. Drink lots of water. Yeah. Yeah, please repeat the timings of the food as recommended. I think you've already answered the intimate. Uh, I mentioned dvi and makalas, dvi, dva. Mm -hmm. It's huh. two, two anakalas and approximately you can eat like around 11 and like 7 in the night, 11 a.m. and 7. Okay, great. Depending so, on your body type, you need to see. Okay, okay. Yeah. I think I received a question on uh, private chat that is Abhyanga and Nasya and how to do it's different or better. So Abhyanga is... Uh, Abhyanga, we can, uh, I told the procedure how to do and that we can do uh, on a regular basis. Now there's, if therapeutic nasya is going on, that is nasya karma as a therapy, then in those days Abhyanga is not, all over body massage is not suggested. Uh, but uh, for nasya, if we are having specific problems, for that nasya karma will be different and in general for daily routine nasya karma, that is going to be different. So it depends on what is your condition. And there's one more question, I think, how to prevent sinusitis. Yeah. And also sinusitis. wound for dry cough, if both are related. Sorry? How to, what are the remedies for dry cough also? Dry cough. Now, dry cough is something which uh, happens, it's unproductive cough, right? So, it happens when your body is a little weak. Uh, sometimes, uh, not having, not getting proper rest also can cause the dry cough sometimes exercising too much is also one of the cause of dry cough and uh, in that cases we can take medications but again you please email it to me and then i'll consult on email personally because i don't want to spend my time for other people also it's, it's going to be a little bit can you suggest something about sinusitis would uh, sudarshan kriya be good for sinusitis yes Sinus for sinusitis any pranayamas which especially the ones we learn in uh, Sudarshan Kriya. Bhastika Pranayam is amazing for sinusitis and the Sudarshan Kriya definitely helps. This is from my personal experience again. I had sinusitis for more than like, it had become so chronic and I had it for like three years straight. And then uh, I pra started practicing Sudarshan Kriya regularly and now I am like sinusitis free since two years now. So Sudarshan Kriya helps like wonders in case of sinus sinusitis. But otherwise, if you're in the acute phase, then uh, take a lot of, you need to stop uh, getting exposed to cold environment. You need to stop using AC and uh, you need to keep your face warm. Basically, these sinusitis is when your uh, open spaces near your nose are filled with some fluid and then they cause inflammation. So you need to make sure that these fluids now are gone. So that again, a giant, uh, 
frying it on the pan, like not frying it, but like heating it on the pan, and then uh, applying it in the form of potpourri will help a lot to drain the uh, fluids in the sinuses. And uh, taking a lot of steam. And if it's too acute, then we need to check personally and then suggest medicines according to that. One more thing is, what can night shift workers do? This came from our YouTube viewers. Night shift workers, yeah, that's, I also wonder that, what should they do? Maybe see if they're, uh, they need to actually improve their, uh, take care of their diet. They need to take more ghee in their diet because if we are staying up at night, then there is a tendency we have a lot of vata aggravation in the body. So they need to do uh, more, like abhyanga has to be their regular routine no matter what. Uh, abhyanga helps to pacify that vata and then in the food also they should add little ghee in uh, their diet. And uh, for their sleep, I think in Ayurveda it's mentioned that uh, Originally, day sleep is not suggested, but if you're not sleeping at the night, then half the time of the day sleep can be, uh, half the time of the night sleep can be taken during the day. So if you're sleeping like for eight hours at night, then four to five hours in the day can be taken. So maybe try and take the sleep before you go to work a little bit and then the next day in the morning and use Abhyanga and uh, this the key in your food. And you need to definitely do meditation twice a day at least because uh, that will maintain your mental peace but the concept of night shift is actually very unhealthy for your body so no matter what it's gonna cause some not so un like not so good effect can we drink water before oil pulling uh yeah but uh, yeah you can little warm water too okay and can abhyanga be done after workout? No, it's uh, it's not going to help much because you're going to be in sweat and uh, you don't want to do oil massage over sweat. After workout, we do mardana. That is, without the oil, just just rubbing the body just like that. That can be done. Otherwise, uh, it has to be done before only. Okay. Uh, there is one question about... Uh, can you suggest something for rheumatoid or arthritis? For rheumatoid arthritis, I wouldn't suggest uh, Abhyanga. They shouldn't be doing Abhyanga on a daily basis. They can uh, just do Seka, that is uh, dry, uh, you know, something warm cloth or something. They can just heat their painful areas. And then I would put my email address on the chat and then maybe you can email me. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Narayani, for taking out time and giving this wonderful session. So the next week, same time at four o'clock, we have another session with uh, Dr. Narayani. It is about the gut health. So you want to just give a brief and a word about it? Yeah, like in today's session, I didn't mention much about food. I just mentioned be aware about your hunger, right? So and uh, stress also takes a toll on your uh, digestive system. And digestive system is one thing which actually is responsible for most problems and most diseases in our body, right? So I think uh, that's the reason I chose this uh, topic to talk about uh, how to keep our uh, digestive tract healthy and what is good and what is not good for us in terms of our uh, food habits. So yeah, we'll talk about that on the next Sunday, I hope. You all will join in and I hope that's it's going to be helpful for you I, I am telling you like it's going to be helpful for you so yeah great see you next week you can get your friends also along just share it to as many people as you can get your friends along and we'll see you next week thank you so much for joining yeah I would just mention the five things which you want to start tomorrow onwards First thing is you need to start Abhyanga. At least 10, 15 minutes, take any oil, whichever you like. Five to 10 minutes of body massage every day, everybody should do. Then the second thing is uh, 
drinking hot water or little bit of milk if your digestion is good before you go to sleep and make sure that you take some time before you go to bed yeah this is second one third is very very essential observe your body listen to your body see what your body is saying to you observe it and do a lot of chintana and fourth is meditate you all should start meditating if you've not started yet and uh, yeah i think yeah one more one more is left exercising yeah we all should start exercising every day yeah 15 minutes 20 minutes whatever time you can take out we should all start so these five things yeah okay great okay see you all on sunday hopefully next sunday bye take bye care. thank you everyone